exchange rates. It's still a rate. We're going to be looking at um, kind of an exchange between things. And here we're often dealing with currency. So like our last example with uh, using the units to help us determine how we write our ratios and our rates here, we're going to pay attention to the units here. And we're going to think about putting the units of the currency that you want <coughs> on top of the rate that you write. So thinking about how that works out here, Spencer has $200 New Zealand to take to Australia for spending money. The exchange rate is one New Zealand dollar to 0 0.89305 Australian dollars. Find out how many Australian dollars he will have. So here I want Australian dollars in my answer. So I'm going to write a fraction with this information where I know there's one New Zealand dollar to 0.89 Australian dollars. I'm going to put the 0.89 Australian dollars on the top. I'm going to put the one New Zealand dollar on the bottom and I'll times it by the 200 New Zealand dollars that he has. So 200 times 0 0.89305 and we get 178 0.61 Australian dollars. And again, that's that idea that Australian dollar is worth more than the New Zealand dollar. So if you travel over there with 200 New Zealand dollars, you'll actually have less Australian dollars to spend. And so the exchange rates here, you can always write them as fractions. Just think about the one that you want is the one that you're going to put on top, and the one that you don't want is the one you'll put on bottom, and then you times by the amount you have. As another example, um, talking about traveling to Europe. One thing that can be confusing sometimes with exchange rates is that you'll see them written in two different forms. So for instance, I just talked about how much one New Zealand dollar was worth. One New Zealand dollar is worth 0.89 or 89 cents Australian roughly. But we can also talk about it the reverse. We can say one Australian dollar is worth 1.12 or one dollar twelve cents roughly New Zealand. And so this is what we call the inverse. And so they get quoted either way, often depending on which country you're in. But if you just pay attention to what, how it's being said, you can figure out how to write your fraction. So here, Lulu has been traveling to Europe. She is returning to New Zealand. She has 350 euro left and wants to know how much it'll be worth in New Zealand. So she wants to know New Zealand dollars. She's looking for her answer to be in New Zealand dollars. Um, so we have information that one euro will buy 1.655999 New Zealand dollars. And I want New Zealand dollars, so I want to think about writing this fraction so that I've got New Zealand dollars on top and euros on the bottom. So I know here that it's telling me I get 1.655999 New Zealand dollars for every one euro. So that becomes my fraction. And I'm going to times by the number of euros that she has, 350. So 350 times 1.65599 and you get 579.60 New Zealand dollars. So again, because the euro was worth more when she comes back to New Zealand with that exchange rate, she gets more New Zealand dollars than she had euro. So again, here thinking about it, I want it to be in New Zealand dollars, so I'm going to write my fraction with the New Zealand dollars on top. This problem here, I wanted it in Australian dollars, so I'll put the Australian dollars on top. Just depends on how you're writing the question, or how you're being asked the question, so pay attention to that.